Hey friends, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to walk you through a problem that you're going to see in like a physics class or a dynamics class, if you haven't seen it already. And that's of a cart rolling down a ramp under the influence of gravity. Well, it usually looks like this in the book or the homework sheet or whatever, wherever you see the picture. And this could mean a lot of things. It really could be a cart rolling down a ramp, maybe. But it could be other things. It could be uh, a pallet or something on a pallet jack because the rolling resistance is pretty low. It might even be reversed. If you look in like the Amazon warehouses, they have these cool automated conveyor belts. So the box doesn't have any wheels on it, but the conveyor belt does. Or the conveyor system has these really good uh, uh, wheels with bearings on them. And so uh, it the system you're modeling may not look exactly like this. In fact, it probably won't, but it will act like this. Now, one of the assumptions they always give you is we assume no rolling resistance. So the acceleration is going to be that way. And we assume there's no rolling resistance. Well, what does that mean? Well, just, just what you think it means. And some of you have experienced this. If you've ever ridden a bicycle where the tires aren't pumped up enough, the tires are really low, it's hard to pedal, isn't it? Well, that's rolling resistance. Or if you've been on like roller blades and the bearings aren't very good, the bearings are worn out or maybe they weren't that good to begin with, you have to push pretty hard to overcome that drag. Well, let's try it. Whoa, this has got no style. What has style? I got something that's got style. This has style. This is my longboard, okay? And this was made by the, uh, I'm gonna put this right side up for you. This was made by the nice folks at Daytron. It's this big aluminum deck and it's got the cool hexagonal cutouts and stuff on it. I put uh, gull wing trucks on it, which I love. And um, let's see, get the wheel here. There we go. I put 90 millimeter wheels on it because the sidewalks here are a little rough. And I popped for the really good ceramic bearings, okay? So you spin and this spins forever. Now, I can convince you the bearings are pretty good, but what about the wheels? Is there rolling resistance? Well, how would we check? Well, I could go out in the hallway and I could just see how far I could coast down the hallway if I pushed off on this thing. Well, let's do that, okay? Okay, so now you believe me? This thing coasts just fine. The rolling resistance on my board is functionally zero. It's, it's small, it's not completely zero, but it's so small, you just ignore it and you still get the right answer. All right, so let's just do that. So here's what we've got. We're gonna go through the four step process to solve this problem. The first step is the working diagram, which is this. The second step is the free body diagram where we're gonna draw just the box there and the forces and the coordinate system. The third step is to write down an equation of dynamic equilibrium, and, or the third step. The fourth step is to solve for something. The optional fifth step is to enjoy celebratory baked goods. I may do that off camera. So let's, I'll leave that up here for now. And um, let's just draw the box. And this looks pretty spare. What is that? Well, does it really look like a box? No, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if this is an um, uh, increasingly elderly professor on a skateboard. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just going to draw it as a box because putting more detail in it complicates the problem but doesn't add anything. So we're not going to do that. Now what we do need is a coordinate system. Positive sign convention here. So there's X and there's Y. It's not a very good arrow. There we go, that's better. Now, when you don't know what else to do, I encourage people to say up is Y and horizontal is X. Now remember, physics doesn't know or care anything about your coordinate system. Physics just works. The coordinate system is there for bookkeeping. It's there for us to keep track of what's going on. Well, physics really does know what up and down is. Down is in the direction of gravity, up is opposite of that, and horizontal is perpendicular to up and down. Well, unless you got a pretty good reason, do that. Today we've got a good reason. We want to know what the acceleration down the ramp is. Wouldn't it be great if one of the uh, axes was parallel to the ramp? I think so, so let's do that. Next thing I'm going to do is draw the forces that are at work here. 
Okay, there's weight, and that's mg. And there's the normal force, perpendicular to the ramp. Um, anything else? Maybe. Here, yes. Let's, I'm gonna erase this, and I'm gonna write Newton's, I think it's his second law here. F equals ma, okay, we all know this. Um, one of the things you may not have thought of is ma, it has the units of force, right? It's kilogram meter per second squared. Well, that's a force, it's on the opposite side of an equal sign from a force, so the units better work out. That right there has units of force. Sometimes, people treat it as something called an inertial force. Now this used to be much more common than it is now. Where I work, we still do use this uh, for our undergraduate students. We do it for two reasons. One is if you treat this like a force and you put it on the free body diagram, statics and dynamics now look alike. Right? So all the, all the methods you learn in statics still work in dynamics. And the second one is because if you do it this way, you get the right answer all the time. Well. I like getting the right answer. Now, is that really a force? You know, in the strictest philosophical sense, no, it isn't. All right? And so it's, it is controversial. If you want to get a physicist cranked up, uh, just ask about inertial forces and stand back. Um, but for us, I'm going to do this. Now, because it's on the opposite side of the equal sign, the inertial force acts opposite the direction of acceleration. Well, the direction of acceleration is obviously down the ramp. So the inertial force is going to go up, up the ramp. All right, so there we go. No problem. Well, maybe a problem. So far, my, my weight is not lined up with the uh, coordinate system, so I'm going to break it into coordinates. W in the y direction is mg cosine theta. And W in the x direction is mg sine theta. And that's not a very good S. Let me fix that. There we go. Once again, let me get out of your way here. So we got that. We're in pretty good shape here. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is to write out an equation of something, okay? Well, I'm going to write it over here because I'm left-handed. This actually works pretty well. And I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Can you see that? Okay, we're good. Some of the forces in the x direction, that looks like statics, doesn't it? Well, it is, except I've got this inertial force in here. Now it's dynamics. See how this works? So I'm gonna write, let's see, Wx is in the negative direction because it goes opposite our sign convention here, plus Fi equals zero. That looks not very intimidating. Well, let's unpack this minus mg sine theta plus ma in the x direction equals zero. Okay, so far so good. Well, what about mass? It appears in both of these. I can divide through by mass. Zero over m is still zero. And let me push g over to the other side of the equal sign. And what I have is ax equals g sine theta. And that's it. That's all there is to this. It's, a, it's one of those, those cases where you get a, a, a nicely simple answer here. Now, what is theta? Well, let's just say you have a 30 degree ramp, which believe me is a really steep ramp. And uh, so sine of 30 degrees is one half. So if that was the case, your acceleration will be half of g. So it's half of 9.81, which I think is 4.905 meters per second squared. But uh, we know that's 9.81, put in whatever you want for theta, and there you go. So we've walked through the problem, we've used our four-step solution method, and we've got a nice, tidy answer. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.